hearty greetings to everyone who are watching this video right now. I am Darshini, freshman from Electronics and Communication Department. As of now, one of the most discussed topics among the climatic change is that of global warming. It has been very challenging to see the planet's survival as global warming accompanied by other climatic factors have unleashed extreme events across the world. One such event is noticed in the top and bottom of the planet where the ice caps are warping the Earth's crust. The melting of ice sheets have led to a reduction in the overarching pressure on the Earth's surface. A new study published in the Geophysical Research Letter has stated about how the deformation of the Earth's crust is leading to a generation of complex patterns of 3D motions along the surface. Not only this, the rising average global temperature is accompanied by a widespread change in the weather patterns. Scientists have indicated that extreme weather conditions like heat waves and intense storms are more likely to be frequent along with the human-induced climate change. Now, just look around yourselves. This was not the condition a decade ago. Floods have become very common and the rainfalls have become very intense. So, what actually the cause for this? It's none other than global warming. So, you could have been thinking that global warming is actually which is something related to heat. What role does it play in the causing of floods and so on? But yeah, it plays a very significant role. This global warming actually increases the overall temperature of the earth and then also leads to the increased rate of evaporation. This leads to a formation of air with higher moisture holding capacity. Now, this air produces intense storms and this storms leads to an abnormally high precipitation as defined by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Well, coming to the very basic root cause for this global warming, you could actually find that carbon dioxide emissions playing a very major role. I agree that there are already a lot of preventive measures to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions, but have you ever thought of a way to eradicate or just to convert this carbon dioxide emissions into beneficial and harmless substances which you can use? If no, Please start thinking. You could see for yourselves that this carbon dioxide emissions are very clearly converted into uh, harmless substances by plants. And you could say that plants are the best energy conversion system of our planet. This is what we are aiming to do so. If you are going to imply that this is a process which can only be done by plants, definitely not. Humans can also carry out this process of photosynthesis in a very efficient way artificially. Most of all, all the ingredients which are being used are completely renewable. We have already embraced a lot of technologies to use these renewable sources of energy to a very maximum level. And a very good illustration for this is the solar cells. You could very easily see how large the solar cells have made the, the dimensions of the energy sector. So, if you are going to ask, are these the only advantages? No, it doesn't stop. The products which you obtain from this artificial photosynthesis can also be used as fuels. Just imagine a vehicle which could actually run with the fuel derived solely from sunlight and water. A fuel which produces zero toxic outputs, a fuel which doesn't have any carbon footprint and a fuel which never goes extinct. Wouldn't that be incredible? This is what we wanted to achieve through the process of artificial photosynthesis. Well, let's come to the technical part. Generally, plants convert this carbon dioxide along with certain complex materials and water by using the energy of light photons to sugar, oxygen, hydrogen and certain other vital chemicals which are required by the plants. Through artificial photosynthesis, we also wanted to achieve this. While coming to the ingredient part, the solar energy which is a renewable source can be easily obtained or collected from the highly efficient solar cells. Secondly, the water is also a renewable source which you could get from anywhere. Finally, let's come to the photosynthetic unit part. 
I'll just tell you with an example. Just take a leaf and magnify it to about a thousands of times. You could see small minute green like structures called chloroplast which actually contains the chlorophyll. And when you further magnify this chlorophyll to a further thousands of times, you could see very basic molecular structure of the plants. These are the photosystem or the photosynthetic unit which does the entire chemical conversion process in the plants. So artificial photosynthesis actually wanted to mimic this particular molecular parts through biomimetic approaches and carry out the artificial photosynthesis process. So, artificial photosynthesis process is actually a multidisciplinary topic which requires multitude in different expertise. There are three main components. First, a component which could actually absorb the light from the sun and then convert it into a form of energy which can be utilized by the photosystem. Secondly, a catalyst which can be used to do the entire chemical conversion that is the photocatalyst. And finally, a component to finalize the first both. Apart from this, there is a very important process called photocatalytic water splitting. In this process, water is actually split into two parts like oxygen and hydrogen. I will just tell you an example or an experiment which was actually conducted by the scientists. Scientists have found a photocatalyst powder which resembles like a very minute white powder or something like that. What they did it? They placed this powder on a glass sheet and then dropped it in a beaker containing water. First, this experimental setup was actually kept in dark, but it does not react. And then when it was exposed to sunlight, you could have already guessed what would have happened. This photocatalyst started bubbling out bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen. Sounds good, isn't it? Now, this oxygen is very highly useful and we all know the uses of oxygen. So let's come to the hydrogen part. This is the fuel which I mentioned before. When this hydrogen is actually collected very efficiently and used in an efficient manner, it can co uh, compromise the natural gas and can be used to generate electricity, heat and also used to drive vehicles. So I would like to conclude by saying that this natural photosynthesis is actually a process which the plants carry out in order to convert the harmful carbon dioxide to the vital chemicals they need. What we are going to do through the process of artificial photosynthesis is actually making the nature and also designing a process which requires specific chemical conversion that is the products which we require are going to be produced. According to a researcher, once this artificial photosynthesis is established or accomplished on a large scale, we will not only have access to green hydrogen, but also would be able to reduce the global warming to a very large extent. So, the next time you see a plant, don't just cross over, just go and see the beauty, admire the beauty, admire the beauty which has been saving us for a billion of years. Thank you.